live. Shalom, Shalom, Makiyam. First, 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 first off, I want to say, call hello. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakakadash. Send double honors, of course, to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to y'all. Came out there pushing. Um, this is uh, GMS Dallas. We're having a, a class session. Um, if you have your notes and, and pen ready, uh, good. If you don't, press pause and go get your stuff. For the younger brothers, uh, definitely uh, write this down. But this is definitely a topic that flows from it doesn't matter what time period that you are in the truth. Because today we're going to talk about belief. Belief, um, you know, when we talk about that concept, you would think that belief is like something that's a standard in your life that's unwavering. You know, you believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You believe in the kingdom and, and, and uh, everything that comes along with it. But belief is definitely something that you can also build. It's something that you can, you, you can perfect through experience, through prayer, and, and, and different things. But today, what we want to talk about is five belief building or belief sustaining tactics. Okay? Five belief builders or belief sustaining tactics. Ways to maintain belief. Now, where I got this lesson from actually came from a business mentor who was talking about um, maintaining belief in building business. And what other uh, business is better or bigger than the business or the profession of the ministry and what we're building here, okay? So we want to highlight that. There's going to be five points. The first point, the first thing to write down, number one, is uh, vision. Vision, okay? Maintaining vision, all right? And vision is all based off faith, all right? So someone can read uh, Hebrews 11 and 1, Bible Shai. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is evidence of things not seen. Now evidence, what do you use evidence for? To prove something. You use evidence to prove something. Your faith is evidence of things not seen. What you have locked, your vision, the view, the faith that you have in the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is actual evidence. That idea locked in your mind is actual proof that the kingdom is real. Okay? The fact that it's such a burning thought in your heart and in your mind and that you want it and you have faith that it's real is proof. And that's a powerful idea. And faith is a key component of any enterprise. So don't let don't let anyone make you believe that you having faith is stupid. Because faith is a is a founding component of any enterprise. You if you're going to be in a relationship with a girl, you have faith that it's going to work out. You're not going into that relationship with lack of faith that it's going to work out. You believe it's going to, you see yourself in the future with this person. You see it in your mind. Therefore, what? You walk out that enterprise of that relationship. Right? right? If, you, if, you, if you start a, a man, I'm going, to sell, I'm, going, I'm going to sell bracelets and necklaces for brothers. You have faith that it's going to work out okay. Mm-hmm. You see yourself... Brothers, all you sending out, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, bracelets and necklaces, whatever. Any enterprise that you go through, the key, a key component of it, a key component of it is to have faith. That is a belief builder. That is a belief sustainer. By by keeping unwavering faith. Anybody have precepts? I got one. <laughs> Let's go, <Okay>. China. <laughs> Romans fourteen and twenty three. It says, "And he that doubted is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith." For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Mm-hmm. So doubt doesn't exist when it comes to faith, pretty yeah. much, man. It ain't no what if, mm-hmm. you know. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. What and what does sin produce? It produces death. Death. Sin is transgression. Right, right, right. It produces death or the end of something. If you work within a business and you don't have faith within the business for it to be successful, what usually happens to that business? It's going to die. It's going to fail. If, it, if you have doubt within a relationship, what usually happens it's within that relationship? Yeah. Right? So if you go into any enterprise with doubt, right, with, right. A, with a lack of faith, it's very likely it's going to produce decay and destruction. Right. Okay? If, if I may, just to add to that, that was a great point because um, let's say whether it's a relationship, whether it's something that you're looking forward to, this is something that you go into very often as well. How there's going to be automatic resistance. 
So it's like how you react to that resistance that's going to come is determined on how strong your belief is. You know what I'm saying? Because those things are going to happen, especially if you're growing somewhere. There's going to be that opposition and that tension that's going to be there. And that's the proving ground to see if you're going to elevate to that next glory or not. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so that's what you're always presenting into the universe when uh, resistance comes. Mm -hmm. Your proof that, that what you're doing, it makes sense. Your proof is what? Your faith. That's right. That's the evidence. Faith is evidence. It's the evidence of the things not seen. That's right. Okay? Somebody else precept? I did have one. Mm -hmm. Real quick. This is uh, the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we look Hold that. We're going to come to that one. Okay. For sure. We're going to come back to that one. When I have one real quick. Yeah, uh, that was 1 Corinthians 4. 2 yeah. Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. No, I'm sorry. Read that. Read okay. that. Go ahead. Okay. 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Yes, sir. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Mm -hmm. And the things that are not seen cause all, can also start as an idea as you're going into as well, that inner vision. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to be made manifest due to your drive within that vision. That's where the picture is painted and is presented before you physically. You know? Uh, this is the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 24 For we are saved by hope But hope that is seen Is not hope For what a man seeth Why does he yet hope for it But if we hope Excuse me But if we hope for that we see not Then do we with patience Wait for it You know so that like, like the scripture said For we are saved by ultimately by hope And if you know hope that's seen Like what are you going to hope in something that you can't That you already looking at Right. You know, we don't we don't physically see how it shot cracking the clouds yet, but we see it in our mind's eye. You know, we see the salvation. That's why the prophets were called seers. Mm -hmm. You see, they were called they were called seers before they were called prophets. You saw the same thing synonymously. Really, when you think about it, because what they seen they seen the things that were, that took that took place before they actually happened. It's called a visionary. A visionary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, Yahweh Shai is the true <laughs> visionary, man. Mm -hmm. revolutionary too. Okay. You know, so you know that's. Right. And we and we are here to to forward that vision. We are here to forward that vision. Anything else? One more. We'll take one more. I, I, I didn't have a precept. I just want to kind of make a point because yeah. a lot of people have visions, uh -huh. but this vision is coming from on high. You know, what I'm saying right. that's something that's up before ordained. So mm -hmm. it's gonna happen. It's not just any random vision. You know. Right. Um, yeah, if I add, brother, because when you go into it, um, I got to put up that word faith in the online etymology dictionary. You can right, get your voice says, up just a little bit slocky. It says faithfulness to a trust or promise, you know, and the Lord, just like I, I may mention in my listen earlier, you know, the Lord uh, made, made good on his promises that, you know, essentially he was going to bring these curses upon us. Well, likewise, you know, the, the now we're coming out of that storm, right? You know, it starts with the election, but, you know, now through, through trusting in Yahweh Basim outside, because that's essentially what faith is to trust in, you know, these promises promised unto us, you know, <clears throat> but that's, that's it. Okay. Kind of one. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, like you said, the, the first point of the, was the vision and evidence, and uh, that's part of the, you know, having faith is looking at the, you know, the stories of old. So I got Sirach, uh chapter 2, verse 10, look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in the Most High and was confounded, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken. Mm. Or whom he ever despised that called upon him. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy and long suffering and very pitiful. And he forgiveth forgiveth sins and saveth in times of affliction. Right. So you gotta visualize your wins. A key component of belief, a key component of going through uh hard times and, and making it to the other side is visualizing the victory at hand. Okay, when we talk about when we see the examples of all these great, you know, people in sports or entertainment or whatever, one of the main things they talk about is I visualize my victory every day. I wrote it on my wall. They have vision boards. They talk about these things. So that's a key component, even for us, man. We keep our faith. We keep that vision of victory in front of us. We'll close this section out with Proverbs chap uh, chapter twenty nine verse eighteen. It says, "Where there is no vision, the people perish." But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So we maintain a, a kingdom mindset in whatever uh, we're doing and knowing that at the end, the Most High has our back. So number one, 
is visualizing your wins, maintain faith. All right? And then and I want to reiterate the topic at hand is belief builders, maintaining and sustaining belief in the ministry, okay? Now, when we have a foundation or we have a vision for something, a vision of, of greatness, and brothers in the chat rooms, you know, we talk to each other every day, we talk and we imagine, we send pictures, and man, look how beautiful this is. Just imagine whenever you have your mansion, imagine the chariots, how it's going to be, imagine the level of fellowship and the things that we're going to enjoy. What happens is that brings about something within our level of confession, your, your confession, the confession of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua victory is a gift. So we have to what? Mind our tongue. Watch our words, right? Mm -hmm. We have to confess with power, right? This is how we hasten the day. Now, when you have a vision, it increases your enthusiasm, mm -hmm. right? Whatever we do, that's, when we do something enthusiastically, what happens? It, it becomes attractive. Mm -hmm. Enthusiasm is attractive. Well, if you got a, I believe in Yahweh Bashem or man, I believe in Yahweh Bashem mm -hmm. There's a difference in that. Mm -hmm. There's a level of enthusiasm that attracts. We are here to do the work, right? Mm -hmm. We are here to confess the word, right? And so when you look up this word enthusiasm, and I'm on, uh, and I'm on online for uh, for young brothers that don't use this, um, you know that you know this. Uh, this website, right, right. So Etymol Online is, is where we go and get the truth in words when you look up the word etymology, right? It says, enthusiasmos, divine inspiration, all right? Be inspired or possessed by a God, right? To be in ecstasy, divinely inspired, right? The word in, theos, wow. God within. So whenever we speak with confidence and enthusiasm of the vision of the kingdom, right? That, that it brings a level of fire. It brings a level of power to the word. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can open this up. You had brought out uh, Second Kings, Second uh, Corinthians, the fourth. Mm -hmm. Let's go to First Corinthians. Yeah, the fourth. Spirit, I was just going here. Right, First <laughs> Corinthians four. This is under vision, right? Mm -hmm. This is under number two. Number two, if you want to write this down, is watch your words. Speak with enthusiasm. Watch your words. Speak with enthusiasm. Right? You know what? Before we go there, get uh, Proverbs 18 and 21. Okay. Proverbs 18 and 21, Baba Kusha. 18. This is Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Start at 20. Verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Right. So your fruit is your the reality you create. You literally speak your future into existence. The Most High spoke uh, 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 everything into existence, and because we are heirs to that throne, he's given us the same glory and power through the Spirit, right? We speak the future into existence. What are you speaking into the into your future, man? Mm. Mind your words, right? If you want to build belief, speak with a level of enthusiasm and godly encouragement that's going to bring about the reality that you want to see. Mm. Are you speaking when you talk about, oh, Esau's coming? Are you speaking what you don't want? Or are you speaking about what you do want? Are you speaking, I want victory? Or are you speaking, I just don't want to lose? Because right. each one, that it's a different thing that you speak. Right. Saying, I just don't want to lose is different from saying, I'm going to win. Right, right. It's a totally different way of speaking your reality. Because right. if you say, I don't want to lose, you're still speaking loss. And doubt. And doubt. Mm. Man. So are you speaking victory over the times to come? Or are you speaking enthusiastically about it with God within? Man, that's it. Or are you speaking with doubt, depression, unsurety? I mean, we might be saved. Right, right, right. If you're Lord willing, we might be saved. Yeah. That's not how Paul was saying it, man. Yeah. I hope you don't read that into Paul's words. Right, right. We might be saved. No. No. Paul had a level of conviction and enthusiasm that allowed him to go into the mouth of the lion. He expected to earn victory. Whichever way it came about. Right, right. Okay? Man. 
Uh, man, I'll just quote the precept. Um, it's in um, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Mm -hmm. and it's one of my favorite ones to bring out. That's right. And it says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil. Mm -hmm. That way I may give you an expected end. Yes, sir. You know, so if he already has thoughts of peace towards us, then it goes into your level of expectation. You know what I'm saying? What is your expectation? What, do you expect to be saved? Do you expect to be destroyed? You know what I'm saying? We serve a merciful God as it is. Yeah. Now, obviously, we keep that level of humility because we don't know if we're the elect, but that don't still mean that you don't put on the elect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's a level of expectation that we all have to have, especially since we understand that that is the root when it comes to faith, the substance of things hoped for. Hope means expectation. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. what do you expect? Right. So if you, like, one of the things that he said in the meeting is if you say something long enough, you, you will convince your mind that it is true. If you say something long enough, you will convince your mind that it's true. What are you telling your mind to believe? Mm -hmm. Words produce the fruit of your words produce the reality that you live. Right, right. So be mindful of that. Now we can go to First Corinthians four and twenty, Baba Kusha. I ain't get that like that twenty one on that Proverbs. Oh yes, 21. yeah, twenty one, Baba Kusha. Proverbs eighteen and twenty one. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. All right. So are you speaking life? And eternal, be mindful of your words. Now we're, we're talking about belief builders. Is your are the words that you speak starving your belief, or is it feeding your belief? Is the words that you speak starving others people belief, or is it feeding others people belief? Come, huh. right. Is it building faith, or is it building doubt? Right. You want to be mindful of this. All of these are seeds. All of the things that you, all of these things are seeds. They produce fruit, okay? And so what fruit are you going to get from the words that you speak? Okay? What you got, champ? Uh, the scripture that you want to hear. Mm -hmm. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 18. The point is in verse 20. It says, Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly if the Lord will and will know, excuse me, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. But the power, the enthusiasm, the God within. Go ahead. For the kingdom of the most high is not in word, but in power. It's in spirit, right? These are the things that call people into repentance. Right? And even if it goes to it go it, it'll go into anything. I don't care what you're doing, bro. You can sell, you know, used converses. But if you speak it, if you speak it, man, I got these shoes, bro. These mugs are fire. Mm -hmm. Yo, I did this, I did that, I put the new design on there. You can sell them converse. Okay? Trust. Okay? What you put your mouth on and what you put your enthusiasm, it'll put, it'll, it'll put power into mm -hmm. it. So when we're speaking about the kingdom, we're speaking about our relationship with Yahweh, Bashi, Yahweh, you're speaking about your future, other brother's future. What are you speaking with? Enthusiasm and belief. And that is what's going to feed you and give you energy. Okay? Don't speak with doubtful energy. Be careful of what you constantly are saying over and over and over again. It matters. It's very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Some I had another one real mm -hmm. quick. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. You can break down. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, so like just just land back and off the uh off the off the previous precept that we just read earlier. You know, the speech that we teach is not necessarily just in, you know, using big words. You know, you have individuals that come and may want to use, you know, big words to entice somebody, oh, oh this person's smart. You know what I'm saying? But no, like really the preaching is is it comes from within, it comes from really Yahweh Bash and Shine. You have to be inspired to preach with the enthusiasm, which, you know, going into what the elder brought out with that word. And Theos, you know, God within. Yeah. And we have great examples from the apostles and the elders, man. From the time that I first came and crossed over into the truth, they speak with the same level of enthusiasm, if not more. Yep. Right? They were always fervent for the kingdom. Every single year, Apostle Hart enthusiastically proclaims his hope for the kingdom to come this year. Mm -hmm. And he does not lose that energy. He has not lost that energy. Right. Right? We have an expectation of the return of Yahweh Shah and us getting the hell out of here as soon as possible. And we have to maintain 
a level of enthusiastic conversation because that will fuel our overall belief. Mm-hmm. Okay? One more scripture and one more scripture. Let's get uh first Thessalonians one and five. Can I, can I start a verse up at four? You sure can, bro. Yeah, this is our first Thessalonians one and four. It says, Knowing, brethren beloved, your election of the most high. So it says, knowing that full mm-hmm. assurance. It says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, mm. and in the Holy Ghost, and in much as assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Mm-hmm. They was not wavering. They didn't come with, with a doubtful mindset. They came for the, with a mindset of, hey, you know, especially with, you know, when people saw <laughs> the, the, the miracles that had been happening at that time, man. But even more so now that we've woken up into this truth, we, we should be coming with the same type of enthusiasm. All right? It says assurance. I want, I'm curious what that word means, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And while you're looking, I was just going to just add, and if you're constantly meditating, you know, that level of enthusiasm is going to be there. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, you deal with your highs, you deal with your lows in the spirit. We all go through those as men. But if you're constantly meditating... When you how about shimmy out a shot, reading those scriptures, you know what I'm saying, just listening to those videos, that love of enthusiasm is gonna stay there. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. For sure, for sure, man. You all you're gonna have up days, you're gonna have down days, man. But you gotta just you gotta you can use some of the things that we're talking about today to overcome. That's right. That's okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that a word assurance, uh it says plephoria. It says entire confidence in the Greek. Yeah, so full assurance, entire confidence, and we know confidence, it means with faith. So faith is always in the picture, man. It says, uh, let me see if it says something in the lexicon. Fullness, abundance, full assurance, most certain confidence. Yeah. So, you know, no doubt, man. You got to believe in your mind that the Lord going to deliver you, man. We ain't doing this for nothing. Yeah. Are you already defeated from the beginning, man? Walking in doubt. Glass half full right, right, Or glass right. half empty yeah, yeah. Instead of glass half full You gotta change your, your, your mindset man mm-hmm. yep. We're fighting to win That's right That's right That's right And you have to speak it first okay? yep. Yeah the, What you speak is gonna affect your mindset It's gonna affect your actions and belief level Okay Would you mind if I get that word power real quick mm-hmm. For you Yeah I, I'm, I'm just funny Cause I'm holding it though. Oh so what Dynamis yeah. Go ahead Oh yeah word kind of. <laughs> uh, That word power there um, Is dynamis Right, and the definition of that word. So like, yeah, yeah, just lost my, uh, just closed out on for some reason. But I got it right here, back up. So, but that word power is dynamis, which where you get that word English word dynamite, right? And it says universally inherent power. And the definition of inherent, when you go into it, is intrinsic. Yeah, meaning. It came with it mm-hmm. to stick something that's like sticks in you, right? Inherent power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature, or which a person or thing exerts and puts forth, which proves that that power that we that the power that we speak in is not it's not of us. It has to come. It has to come from Yahweh Bashem Al Shai. Has to it has to come from the throne. Yahweh Bashem Al Shai has to breathe in you that inspiration to go out there and preach with the vigor and the, with the power that you that, that we're preaching. Right. You know. That's right. That's right. That was mm-hmm. it. Man. This is uh, Habakkuk, uh, chapter verse seventeen and uh, eighteen. It says, "Although the Habakkuk, fig, what oh, chapter? chapter? Uh, Habakkuk is like three, verse seventeen. It says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail." And the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the foes, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. It says, Yet I will rejoice in Yahabashim Yahushai. I will joy in the power of my salvation. Mm-hmm. And like I said, we're going through, uh, we're going to see more and more adversity going on in the, in the world. Okay, we're going to see, uh, it's going to be no joy, no mirth in the, uh, in the streets. Right, right. But what we do is when we have that faith, as we said earlier, you know, you watch uh, the words you speak. When we speak, we speak with enthusiasm. Like right. we're going to have with the bad words. Yeah. You know, we letting our people know, even though the mirth we see is disappearing from the streets. 
and what we're doing. We're still crying out loud. Right. You know, because we believe and have that faith. And the Lord is speaking through us. Right. Mm-hmm. Just backing up enthusiasm, I got a precept. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10, it says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. So meaning all your strength, meaning with all your enthusiasm, or don't do it. Do it or don't do it. I forgot who said that quote. Was it Yoda? Mm-hmm. Uh, from do Star or Wars? do not. Do, do or do yeah. not. Yeah. Like meaning it ain't like I it's might do stuff. it, you know, we'll see all that. No, either you're going to do it or not do it, man. Mm-hmm. Whatever capacity the Lord's giving you through the spirit, max out on it. Right. You know? What verse you say that was, bro? Uh, Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. I'll read it again. It says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave with it thou goest. Mm-hmm. So while we had this time of grace, man, we got to max out, you know, with the portion that you've been given in the spirit. Mm-hmm. That's that level of enthusiasm that the elders going into. Okay. All right. So that's the third thing. The first, the first what we said was um, visualizing your wins, maintaining a, a faith. The second thing is watching your words, speak with enthusiasm, confess with enthusiasm. The confession of salvation is a gift. Be thankful for that you can even put it on your tongue. Speak it more, right? That's right. The third thing is you want to build relationships with people who are chasing your same goals and dreams. All right? You want to build relationships with people who are running the same direction as you. Okay? Those are the people that you want to converse and associate with more um, 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 consistently. The people that have that same standard, right? You get Proverbs 13 and 20, Bob Kusha. Would you classify that as association, like you said? Absolutely. You want to associate with those who have the same dreams and goals as you. Proverbs 13 and 20, I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter 13, okay. verse 20. Proverbs 13 and 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Right. And so you want to walk with, 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 with other men that are wise in what? You know, wise in playing video games? No, you want to walk with those who are wise in the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and that are actively chasing the kingdom to, that, to come. All right? Those are the people who are going to help build your faith. Those are the other people that are going to help build your belief. Right, right. All right? Those are the people that when you are at, at a place where your belief might be in a, in a waning type of stage, you've taken some hits, you're taking resistance from Satan, that those are the people that's going to say, hey, you know what? I understand that's going on, but hey, you remember what the bigger goal is? You remember what the bigger picture is? You remember what the main, you got to keep the main thing, the main thing, main thing, the main thing. I, right? right? Proverbs 27 and 17. Baba Kusha. Okay. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17. It reads, Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. The man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend, man. All right? Those are the people that's going to keep you locked in and your belief level high because they're going to be chasing the same dreams, goals, you know, the kingdom mm-hmm. along with you. They're going to relate to you when you're going through issues with your family members. You know, they're going to relate to you when you're going through issues maybe within your body. They're going to relate to you when you're going through issues maybe with a with job or enterprise or things outside of the truth. Right? Because they're having the same struggles as you are. You're not alone. People, The other brothers are going through the same stuff. Similar things. Okay? But if you're hanging out and you're associating, associating more closely with people who don't carry those same mindset beliefs and, and agenda... They're going to tell you, yeah, forget about that. Come do this. Because mm-hmm. this is what's important. This is what I'm doing. They're not going to sharpen your countenance and build your belief in chasing the kingdom. Right? They don't got, they think about the kingdom. You know? Yo. Mm-hmm. You are the company you keep, if I can just say That's that. right. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 51. Mm-hmm. Understand thou for thyself and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. Right, it says, seek out the glory for this. Saying glory comes in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It comes in power, might, all right, the chariots. So you seeking out that glory, man. The Most High is shining His face upon the elect, upon the right. people that's chasing, chasing the glory of uh, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Those are the people you want to be around. Those, those are the people that they're gonna keep you and help you maintain a level of belief. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
if thou lovest to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou uh, bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. It says, stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just going to the fact of, you know, finding that like-minded individual. To, to, to cleave one, to, to you know, be, be, be friends or companions with. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got a precept too. Mm -hmm. This is Jeremiah 5. I'm going to start at 1 and I'm going to jump down. This is Jeremiah 5 and 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man, if there be any that execute the judgment that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. And that's naturally what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? I would say is run to and fro. All right, well, when you go into that, that really access the job of um, a postman or so. You know, even in, um, I think it was Job 9 and 25, it says my days are swifter than the post. Mm -hmm. right. That's why in Habakkuk it says, you know, um, it says um, when you read it, the, the vision it says, then you shall run. Right. Whoever right. runneth that read it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we're all running within this race together because we're in this congregation receiving all this divine inspiration, this enthusiasm, this word, and our job is to run out there and teach it. And you run back to the source, get that recharge, mm -hmm. and you go back out again, right? Now I'm going to jump down to verse 5. It says, I will get me unto great men, and I will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. So being among this congregation, all right, it says they have broken the yoke. And going into that, it really just goes into being liberated. You know what I'm saying? We've received liberation, even though we're in the hands of our captivity. We've received that liberation, and when we're amongst each other, we really got to take advantage of it because this is heavenly counsel right here. You know what I'm saying? And this has enough power to overcome death. It's already been overcome. You know, but Yahweh said what? When two or more are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of it. You know? That's actually talking about them breaking the bonds of the Oh, it's talking about them not falling out the The great man not falling out the will of Yahweh. Hey, if you can keep on reading now, that's, it's like I'm not trying to. You know, no, shoot, it's correct. That's, that's, what that's, that's what that's talking about in Isaiah. Come on, it's come on. Because if you read verse 6, it says, Look for the lion, but the force says, Slay them. Mm. And they will put the evening shall spoil them. Mm. And they will put the evening shall spoil them. And they will put the evening shall spoil them. And leopards shall watch over their cities, meaning because these wise men. Because you remember well, who Jeremiah was talking about, talking to, he was yeah. talking to the kings. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he was telling these great men, they're not going out the way, so the most high is going to destroy them. Mm. But Salaki. No, I'm shooting them out of That's you know correct. Saying? Yeah, I, that was received. <laughs> class if I could just quote a class on class, so class, class, let's go chat. I had sharp and iron. If I could just quote a precept, you know, the scripture says in Psalm 37 37, mark the perfect man for the end of his peace. You know, so. How do you mark the perfect man is by is by association, associating yourself with the men that are walking after the will of after the will of Yahweh you know mm -hmm. you know, Be followers of me as I'm a follower of Yahweh mm -hmm. as as the apostle Paul said. Yep. You know? God. God. All right, I'm gonna move on to number four. All right, number four is do things daily that you're proud of. You want to maintain a level of belief? Would do things daily that you're proud of, right? And this is the difference between being in a mind state, a mind state of coping with the the earth and Satan ruling, and versus overcoming and focusing on the kingdom. Okay, because whenever we whenever we just want to cope to get through the day, we don't do things we're proud of. We do things that give us immediate pleasure, that give us immediate comfort. And sometimes that doesn't make us feel good. Mm -hmm. But when we do things that make us uncomfortable, that stretch us, when you, you, when you, when you read but you didn't feel like reading, after you read, you, you proud of yourself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When you do that lesson but you didn't feel like click and play, yeah. you feel good about yourself. That's right. Right. That's right. When you go to the class or you tune in and you take notes but you didn't really feel like it, afterwards, it builds your belief. Yeah, right. So you want to do things that make you feel proud of yourself. That's right. You want to stay in the discipline of your how about shy. Because once you complete those type of tasks, it's just like working out a diet. You know, you can eat that piece of candy, you can eat that bread, 
But at the end, you you kind of like, man, why did I eat that? Yep. Yep. Man, if you actually stayed with the discipline and not doing it, you feel a little proud of yourself. When you Absolutely. go and work out, when you didn't feel like working out, yeah. you're like, I'm sore, but I feel good. Yeah. Straight up, straight up. You see what I'm saying? Man, just a quick, just, just, just a quick point. Is four, is when you do that, 50. you know what I'm saying? The, the spirit takes over anyway. Right. You know what I'm saying? Once you actually step out there one time, get your feet a little wet. You know what I'm saying? You swimming like a mug and didn't even realize it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I know that's because that happened to me a few nights ago. I, it was late as heck. I'm tired. And I'm like, you know, I'm just read real quick. Ended up being a study session for about an hour. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it didn't feel like an hour. Right. You know, so that's just a personal testimony with it. Like once you get going and get your feet wet, the spirit's going to take over. Right. You know? Somebody can grab Sirach 26 and 4. You can read what you got. Kind of, kind of. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 14. It says... Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Yahweh Shah shall raise up also shall raise up us also by Yahweh Shah and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of the most high. Mm-hmm. For which cause we faint not, but though our inward man perish, read it again. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just that daily renewal process through accomplishment. You know, even when you don't feel like doing certain tasks within the ministry, praying as much as you need to, reading, studying, yeah. so on and so forth. It says, let me just keep reading. Mm-hmm. For our light affliction. For which- our light affliction. Mm-hmm. So the, the things that we go through, the things, the delaying, the, the, the delaying, the comfort and everything like that. Is a light affliction. Go ahead. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Boom. And so, you know, that discipline of staying within the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah is a major belief builder. We're talking today on do things that maintain and build our belief within the ministry, within this business. All right? Now, like I said, these were business principles that was taught to me. But then when I was reading, when I was listening to the lesson, I was like, well, these are spiritual principles right. Right. first. Right. Then they can go and translate to actual building of a business. Okay? Might as well just finish the chapter. Mm-hmm. Verse 18, it says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Mm-hmm. For the Don't things... Vision. Yeah, yeah. It all comes back full circle. <laughs> it all circle. comes right. back to it. Mm-hmm. It says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Right. So you want to stay and make sure you're doing those things. And we have the foundational things within the uh, ministry that we talk about doing. Where do you spend your time and where do you spend your money? All right. And what, when, and what do you uh, put your mouth on? Right. And so you're always confessing the name of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. You do that through what? Through these class sessions, through the street speakers, doing your lessons and sit downs, your prayers and supplication you you tithe all right you bring your resources or whatever talents and gifts that you have to the body and to it within the ministry okay um and then you show up <laughs> you show up you know sometimes it's not you don't feel like showing up but you show up anyway yeah okay when you do these things and you you're renewed by them yep. and when we also want to talk about our time we're talking about reading listening and associating Read, listen, associate. Read, listen, associate. Read, listen, associate. These things help maintain and build belief, especially when you're going through hard times. And like I want to reiterate, no one's perfect. No one's perfect. Just because I'm teaching this lesson right now and I'm talking about belief doesn't mean I'm just the most belief-bound, built person of all time standing on some type of mountain. I'm never wavering in my belief. (laughs) Satan can't get me. I have no down days. I speak positive every day. No. Right. The reality is these things are techniques and things that we right. keep in mind, but you're going to go through some shit. Absolutely. You're right. going to feel bad sometimes. You're going to want to get a drink, get drunk, and be left alone sometimes. Absolutely. You're going to want to tell everybody around you, shut the fuck up. You're going <laughs> to not feel good some days, man. Right. But we got to keep these things in mind to where we don't go too far into the sunken place. You got to have a way to anchor and draw yourself out of those holes. Okay? That's the reality of being in this flesh. It's going to be constant. It's not going to be where you just feel great 100% every single day. That's right. Man. That it's not the Grow up. Facts. That's facts. Okay? 
grow up. You know? And so we have to make sure that we keep a... When I don't like to use the term be realistic. Because we're not in this truth to be realistic. You're not here because of a realistic... It's not realistic that you're going to get on a chariot and blow up the nations and, and rule. Okay? I'm not here to get a barely just scrape by. No, you want a major victory, a miraculous victory, power, spiritual power that the world's never seen before. Right, right. We're not here to be realistic. That's right. Bro. You're here because you have hope that abounds the heavens, man. That's it. That's and this is what you're chasing. So you got to develop that, man. You got to continue to... You know, do these things so you stay in that energy, man. That's right. We're not here for a basic, du- no, you know what I mean? It's, you know, people be realistic, be realistic. You know, you shut up. I'm going to chase greatness. Right. Mm-hmm. You be it. realistic yeah. with that whack-ass life you live in. Kind of, kind of. Go get the jab and shut up. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. I'm not going to do that. That's We're right. not here to do that. We're That's here to be the elect. That's right. The right. small That's right. group that makes it. That's I'm right. not here to be realistic. That's right. That's okay? Right. And you're not here to be realistic. You reading all this stuff about your forefathers and all the things they did? That's not realistic. Yeah, right. What Abraham would have had wasn't realistic. The vision that we see here, that's not realistic. Kind of, you know kind of, what I'm saying? Of. We're trying to go way further. So you got to have a high level of belief in order to continue to chase that, right? That's right. Man. Please, uh, mm-hmm. uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Obtain, right. So purpose driven life. So I know TD Jakes used to have those books, right? But you really do have to have purpose in your life, man. That's what's gonna uh, compel that that enthusiasm and that drive. You know, right? It says, "In every man that's striving for the mastery, like the elder said, we're not chasing realistic goals. We're trying to dominate, man. We're trying to do what the scripture says, and it's gonna take divine intervention. So our mind has to be on a different wavelength than how." so-called realistic people think to obtain this this prize it says and every man that's striving for the mastery is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible crown everlasting life having the law statute commandments and our inward parts man an incorruptible crown it says i therefore so run not as uncertainly just going back to not doubt having that trust and that belief man it says, "I dare so." I and dare, and yep. you're not ran. You're not. You're not random with with, with your action. Okay, mm-hmm. we're not just all over the place, uncertain. All right, we we have a centered mindset towards what we're doing. We're talking. The scriptures talk about keeping your eyes single. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit more. Yep. Where are you at, Yadaka? Uh, right this now. is First Corinthians nine and twenty six. I'll read the last verse. It says, "I therefore so run, not as uncertainly." So fight I, not as one that beat up the air. So you got to be in this thing to win. Are you already lost, man? Right. For whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Right. Which the wage of sin leads to death, man. If you come into an enterprise with doubt, it ain't going to make it, man. Right. It's going to fail. Like we started earlier, you come into a relationship with that seed of doubt, that shit going to fail, man. Yeah. Or like uh, like the other was going into sales. Yep. You know what I'm saying all oh, Oh no! I might. I, hopefully, I will get a sale. <laughs> yeah, nah. Good luck. Mm-hmm. Don't go in there like that. Mm-hmm. Nah, you gotta, you gotta have, yeah, you gotta have supreme confidence, man. Yep. Yeah, I don't say the scriptures even talk about coming boldly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to your salvation, you know. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You can't half ass attack salvation. That's right. That's right, man. These are things that maintain and build belief. Mm-hmm. This is Second Peter chapter one. I'm gonna start at verse five. It says, and beside this. Giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, mm. into virtue knowledge, into knowledge temperance, into temperance patience. That wasn't anybody who asked you, well, now that I'm in this truth, what do I do? This is everything. That? <laughs> that right there. You know what I'm saying? And then once you start to uh, add those attributes to your repertoire and build on them, you know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, I'll say, for you know it, you're a man of the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, but you got to follow the instructions. It's coming from the head of the church underneath the Yahusha, Peter. You know, so he said, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, which that temperance is having self-control. Mm-hmm. That's right. And to temperance, patience, which with that self-control is going to cause you to be patient, is going to cause you to suffer, right? And to patience, godliness, because with that suffering and with that patience that you're going through, 
it's going to purge out those impurities mm -hmm. in you, yep. right? And to godliness, brotherly kindness, charity. That's what covers the multitude of sins, watching out for your brother, having your, brother, having your brother's interest in mind, right? Mm -hmm. And to brotherly kindness, charity, right? For if, that, if, for if these things be in you and abound, going from glory to glory, right? They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Oh, right there. And that's the most important thing, man. You know, the Lord said, I would say, it, it, I would say the Lord pretty much told the disciples, everything you learn, you're going to have to teach it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he prepared them for that walk. He put, he, he used, he, he added every essential element to what they needed to do the job. You know what I'm saying? And we come in that same stead. I don't even know what y'all talking about. <laughs> it's it's belief, belief sustaining tactics. Right? Building and maintaining belief. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was one more one more precept on this um particular one. Oh. If somebody has one, or we're gonna move on to the next. Did, did we get the Sirach twenty what was it? Twenty six and uh, yeah, twenty six and four. Sirach twenty six and four about push out. Okay. This is Sirach chapter twenty six, verse four. It says, Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart toward Yahweh Shem Shai, he shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. Boom, it don't matter what if you're up, down, left, right, with whatever situation you in, if you have a good heart, good mind towards towards Yahweh Shem Shai, you will be in that consistent mindset. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you know, as a person that always has to check my emotional stability, because I'm a person that's very up, down, mm -hmm. I get very high, I get real low. And so I always have to check, okay, what's my source? Right. What am I, why, why am I here? Yep. You know what I mean? To give me an even kill and not let things that's happening around me get me so flustered. Right. You know, sometimes you got you to gotta sit back and make sure that you're getting the bird's eye view of what's going on. So you're not getting too high or too low emotionally. Oh, yeah. right. All right? Oh, yeah. No matter what's going on, because there's always going to be something. All right, but if, if if you allow circumstances and situations to rock you, your level of belief can get rocked, right? So you have to maintain your relationship with Yahweh Shemeshah. Where you're at, you're good. Mm -hmm. He's with you. You all right? Mm -hmm. You got everything you need. Yep. It ain't that bad. You asked ask for it. it. You know. <laughs> you we, asked still, for it. we still got work to do. We are we we good? Mm -hmm. And then what happens? You calm down and you just focus on getting the job done. Right, right, right. Because right. we're still getting the job done at the end right. of the day. Yep. Okay, you got something burning on you? <laughs> oh, man, yeah, yeah, prophet indeed. I was going to say this real quick. <laughs> you know, it's like if you, have, if you have the thought process of, Lord, just put the spirit on me to do this. I know I've been whack, whatever. The simple fact that you have are meditating and minding on him, the spirit of the Lord is with you. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's okay. confessing a fault. That's confessing a fault right. right there. The simple fact that those thoughts are still able to enter into your mind. To be convicted on those things, mm -hmm. ride with it, because the Lord is with you right there, and that's an obvious indicator. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll say, I will say, I ain't gonna jump off the green building downtown, but I do believe I can fly through mm -hmm. the spirit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, hey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I want to go to the fifth and final point. Come on, come on. The fifth and final point on maintaining and building belief within the ministry is sow seeds more, and you will reap. Sow seeds more, and you will reap. Yeah, store up your churches in heaven. Okay? The Most High is faithful. He will not forget your labor of love. And we can start with uh, Galatians 6. And uh, is it Galatians 6 and 7. I got it. Mm -hmm. Look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. The Most High is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What you sow is what you're going to reap, and you will reap abundantly. If you sow righteousness, you will reap righteousness abundantly. Now, we're not going to go through the whole parable of the talents. But when you read Matthew, the 25th chapter, it's a parable of the talents. And basically, you had the, the landowner give three servants a different measurement of talents for them to deal with. And according to what they did with it is how much they reaped. So now we have this confession. We have this gift of the confession of Yahweh Shem Yahweh in our mind and in our mouth. Go out and sow. Go out and confess. Go out and preach. Right? 
this is how we know you know men are have this great reward uh, waiting on them because of their level of confession right so more you will reap and what you what you sow you will reap abundantly keep reading now Galatians 6 and 8 for he that soweth to his flesh flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting mm. it says and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not right and so you can't don't let the sun don't let the toil don't let the insects beat you down while you're sowing you know you go out there in the field and the sun is beating on you bugs is biting you you're not feeling like anybody's help nobody's helping me you know <laughs> yeah Damn. nobody no, <laughs> nobody, nobody knows but me. Don't stomp out your own blessing. You know what I mean? You should be able to be thankful to know that hey, I'm so I'm here sowing. I'm going to reap abundantly of this. Okay, and so don't be weary and well doing. And we all go through the weariness of the mind. We all feel unappreciated sometimes or unthought of. You know what I mean? And I'm speaking this from personal experience. Oh, yeah. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I'll tag you in on that shit, too. <laughs> you know? We all have those thoughts of, oh, man, you never know what cares. <laughs> yeah. You know? I said, but then you get a precept like this. Yeah. Matthew 10 and 41, it says, He that receiveth the prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's that's reward. It, that's it. And yeah, he that receiveth yeah. the righteous man in the name of a righteous man, he shall receive a reward. That's how you check yourself. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's it. That's all. You know what I'm saying? So as, as far as you can fall down that rabbit hole of, uh, it's a precept to pull you out of that. That's right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's the like? What? What? Uh, I was gonna ask real quick. What scripture was that? Again? Matthew 10 and 41. Okay. Yeah, buddy. I can say something real quick. A lot of times, you know, you're focusing on the people who ain't good, and you should, man, versus focus on the people who's in your corner. You see what I'm saying? So. Sometimes you gotta just focus on the shit. With this brother, this person didn't check them, but the shit with their head. You know what I'm saying? And that balances out, man. Sometimes you get those lows in there, brother hit you up, hey man, how you doing? You know? And you have to focus on that. Instead of focusing on the negative all the time. Right. Because the negative's gonna be there, but you know, that's where Sirac the second chapter kicks in. You know what I'm saying? Being cheerful really means being positive. You're going through certain things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's right. That's right. And you know that even goes back to the to the number three, which was build relationships with the people who are chasing the same thing that you you're running for. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh-huh. And so, but that can affect your your willingness or your ability to sow seeds when you get too far down. So sow seeds more, and you will reap more. Come. Just keep, just keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding. Back in Galatians 6. Oh, come on. Uh, Galatians 6 and 10. It says, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them. Somebody says something? No, I'm just saying opportunity. That's it. Come, come. Yeah, it says, Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Mm. Especially, like Mike Oliver just said, especially unto to them. Who are of the household of faith. Alright. So sow more. Do more. Deal more. Work more within this ministry. And there will be an abundant reward waiting for you. God. That is a promise. That's right. That is a promise. And Yahweh Bashim is not going to break his promise. Anybody got precepts? I do. Let him, let him run. Okay. Um, this is a Hebrew 6 and 10. It says, For the most high is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. I was saying, people don't realize what they're saying. The Lord ain't gonna forget your work and your labor of love. Don't know uh, what's that in the uh, in the proper for words say that everybody else forgets about our works. You know what I'm saying? They don't account our labor at all. Right. So, 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 there you go. Yeah. Our labor is not accounted amongst nobody but the Lord. Right. right. Think about that. Uh, think about that. All that all the appreciation that we don't get down here right. doing this work, the Lord appreciates us. Right. Boom. Mm-hmm. Boom. Just don't up That's head. what I'm saying. Appreciation down here ain't going to do nothing but swell your head up and get you jacked up. That's it. Right. That's it. Right. You know? 
But being 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 worthy in the eyes of the Lord is a whole you you you, you cooking with grease now. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I will say thumbs up. The lights don't come from heaven. Right. You got it, bro. Kind of, uh, Hebrews six and ten. For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed towards His name, and that ye have ministered to the saints. And that's, what that's why people don't appreciate us, because all our works and all our efforts go towards the Lord and not them. Right. That's why they hot. You know what I'm saying? If we pulled the energy of this ministry into regular people, they would love us. But we ain't got time for that. You know? It's a part of us sowing seeds to the Lord. Right. Because minister means to serve. That's what I'm saying. Store up your treasures in heaven, man. Right. You That's see? the only way we have a shot at reaping like the elder was going into this point. It says, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. That's what I'm saying. And that's the only way the elect is going to be built. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? By those that's going to believe on you. How about you? Those that's going to believe on the prophets because they're sharing the same word. Right. Go ahead. That's the only way you're going to reap if you uh, give diligence unto the end. Mm -hmm. That's the point I want to make. That's the only way you're going to reap the kingdom. Salvation. Through much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom of heaven, man. So, right now, while it's time to, to build up, to labor, to, to sow seeds, man, we got to sow as much as possible, you know? Mm -hmm. God. This is uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Now, namely, this is, this is going into tithes and offerings, to bring that out there. But it can still act as a general... Uh, precept going into sowing because when you even give tithes, so you're yeah, sowing seeds. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this is uh, Malachi 3 and 10. Don't prove me now. Hey, That's right. Mm -hmm. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, and there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I would not open you the windows of heaven. Watch me go hard. Mm -hmm. Watch me go hard. That's what he, he, look like, he like, look, I already got a plan to go hard. I just need y'all to come on with it. Test me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Right. Was, really? Mm -hmm. I'm saying, who else, who else you going to believe? It's a guarantee. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Who else you going to believe? Yeah. Yeah. I was saying, the Lord be, boy, the Lord be swagged up. Mm -hmm. I got this. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Will y'all let me show out? Real talk. <laughs> hey, that, that goes into what we was talking about earlier. Going into the word God in Greek is Theos. That word yeah. Theos goes in the theatric, a theater. Mm -hmm. So he gonna bless you in a major way. Yeah. You know, because he likes to stunt like you're talking about. That's right. You know, solid point. It says, um, Improve me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I would not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that, I'm gonna read that part again, and pour you out a blessing that there shall none be room enough to receive it. That's what I'm saying. That go back, that say, that go back to Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. Mm hmm. If you and we'll say if you obedient, I got you. That's right. You know, you got con con, and I'm just a land back on that because uh, naturally back then, if you were actually on point giving your offerings, giving your tithe, which is which really tithe means tenth. You know what I'm saying? So if you was doing it in order of how the heavenly Father allowed it to do it, it would rain. And if there's examples when we weren't on point doing that, it went raining, crops died, cattle died, all you know, it was a domino effect afterwards. You know, so you apply that spiritual nuggets. You know what I'm saying? Going into that, opening that window of heaven. All the blessings that the Lord is going to rain down. And it's many. I did, um, I did a lesson earlier this week going into um, the door of utterance. And Paul talks about that in Colossians, the fourth chapter. And when you go into that word um, utterance there, that word in the Greek is um, logos. And one of those word logos, it, one of the definitions pretty much goes into the power of speaking things into existence and even thinking things into existence. That's and what I'm the, saying. Where did that come from? Right. That's right. Just to say something that happened. It came from the heavens. Man. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. And that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We've been given that power in these mm -hmm. weak ass bodies. That's right. Facts. You got it, bro. Yeah. And um, just um, the more you're on point, the more you're following these steps as we're going into following the fruit of the spirit, the door is only going to open wider. You know what I'm saying? It's only going to be more rain that's going to come down. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's why the scripture says, he that believeth on me as a scripture, I said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So if you plant that seed and then you're watering that seed with the word and you're constantly watering those seeds, eventually, eventually us calling to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, praising Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, calling the Lord to come back, what's he, he's going to send Yahweh Shai right, back. Right, right, sure. That's, that's, that, that's, that's going to be the reaping, you know? Mm -hmm. 
had a precept for you because he wasn't finished. That was it. Okay, real quick one. Ecclesiastes 11 and 1. It says, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Mm. Can you read that again? Uh, Ecclesiastes 11 and 1. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Yeah, man. So that goes into basically spreading out your um, your investment, okay? And knowing that it's going to come back up, all right? Knowing that it is, it is it, after you delay your gratification now, it's going to come back. It's mm-hmm. going to, you will abundantly reap, all right? The Most High has got that law written out there, man. And, you know, we can go into all the different scriptures that talk about the husbandman and vineyard and all this and that. But the whole mindset of it is, to continue to sow, continue to sow in the spirit, and you will reap, okay? You will reap. You will leave a lasting legacy, not only for yourself, but for your children's 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 children. Right. You like have to maintain that mindset, a, okay? It's already in Malachi, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Get a three or six. Real quick. Come. This is Malachi three and back six. Up it says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. You see? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, bro, the Lord got this. The Lord got this. If he say, if he say, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14 is what it is. And he say that the sons of Jacob is not consumed. I don't know what else you need to hold on to. That should make you want to sow more. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? He said, who had ever been confounded that trusted in the Most High and His Son? That's what I'm saying. What are these niggas leaning on? <laughs> what are these people leaning on? Like, bro, that's plain, written, documented. You know what I'm saying? But the nigga still let Eve and Esau run a train on his own. Let's go. Basically. Okay? <laughs> All right. And so, you know, that, those are five different things. Did you have something? Mm-hmm. This is uh, the book of Second Corinthians, chapter nine, verse six. It says, "But this I say: He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully." So, you know, essentially, you know, there's a saying that goes: "You put in what you want out of it." You know, so you know, we can't be you know, last days ago it goes into the enthusiasm that the Zuquan had brought out. You know. Great, great scripture. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, man, absolutely. You get out what you put in, yo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, hey, just to recap, you know, ways of maintaining and building belief within the ministry. One, you want to, uh, basically, you want to visualize your victory, maintain faith. Two, watch your words. Your words will become your future. Speak with enthusiasm or, or, or God within. Three, Build and associate, build relationships and associate with those running in the same direction as you. Those who are chasing the kingdom along with you. People who have the same vision and goals. Four, do things daily that make you proud of yourself. Renew yourself day by day. Allow the disciplines of your reading, listening, and associating to give you that that encouragement that you are doing the right thing. Focus on the mindset of overcoming instead of coping. Impulsive decisions to make you feel comfortable right now usually make you feel bad later. Mm-hmm. Discipline decisions that make you uncomfortable right now usually make you feel better. Right? Yep. And stores up your treasure. Okay. That's right. Five, sow more seed. Sow seed. Because in the end, you're going to eat. Sow more seed because in the end, you will reap abundantly. It's a promise from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Okay? Mm-hmm. So, hey, that was something that I, you know, we had in the class session. So I felt like it was great points, good things. It's actually something we was gonna cover in a Sunday class, but hey, you got it on the Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any points to close out with? All right, man. With that, man, once again, we'll say call hello. Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem Rakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to y'all. Okay, I'm out there pushing the words and sitting in truth. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.